Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of House Bill 2535, also known as our Better Beginnings for Babies Bill. I'm proud to say this bill has earned bipartisan sponsorship, and it carries on the work of former representative and health care provider Rachel Pruzak. As a pediatrician, I visit newborns in the hospital. I give them their first checkup, and I pet their hair when, when they have hair, and help a family fathom the huge change that now defines their lives. It's one of the best parts of my job. And in this role, I've occasionally visited the newborns of adults in custody from Coffee Creek Correctional Facility, which I'll call Coffee Creek from here on out, which is a somewhat fraught situation as we contemplate the coming separation of the baby from the mom. But let's back up a bit. Let's think about the months leading up to the delivery of this precious or, dare I say, innocent baby. What influence do these months have on the health of this newborn? It turns out to no one's surprise that the conditions of pregnancy are incredibly consequential. We do know that women who are incarcerated have higher rates of baseline medical issues that can complicate pregnancy. And we know that people of color are disproportionately represented in our incarcerated community and black women in particular experience a higher incidence of complications and poor outcomes, including death during pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum. We also see more anxiety and depression among incarcerated women. However, it is important to note that when there is good prenatal care, when we really engage and support the pregnant person, we can mitigate some of these risks and improve the chance of a healthy baby at the end of pregnancy. Here enters the work of a doula, known as a traditional health worker, a trained and certified expert that provides physical, emotional, and informational support to a pregnant woman before, during, and after the delivery of a baby. House Bill 2535 sets up a doula program at Coffee Creek, where this support person provides guidance and expertise by joining the person who is pregnant to routine prenatal visits while offering emotional support to the mom. The doula accompanies the mother throughout labor and delivery at the hospital, and then the doula assists, if, if they choose, with the pumping and the transport of breast milk to the baby through the program called Expressions of Care. Of course, ideally, all of this care is delivered in a trauma-informed manner through culturally specific providers. This bill also calls for developing tight parameters on the use of shackles during labor and delivery, as well as humane and medically recommended protocols to process postpartum people from the hospital back into Coffee Creek. We all share the goal that every single baby receive the best start in life, even under the most challenging circumstances. Adding a doula to the team that provides prenatal care, delivery support, and postpartum services for women in custody will help us provide better beginnings for the babies born to incarcerated women. And this will be at no cost to the state, no fiscal, as the Department of Corrections staff has staff to coordinate this care and the doulas will be supplied at no charge by outside agencies. I'm proud to say this bill has earned bipartisan sponsorship. It has been supported by the Department of Corrections and it passed unanimously out of the House Judiciary Committee. I also want to thank Elena Amarin, who I think is here, um, sitting here somewhere today, I think, or maybe watching on TV, for her work being a doula of sorts for this bill, shepherding it across the finish line. Please join me in supporting and delivering this bill, House Bill 2535. Thank you.